What's up, party people? Mr. Oliver here with the last part, part 10, part 10 of the chapter 28-29 lecture. This is going to finish it up, and we are talking about the Pacific Front. And the Pacific Front is what was happening when the Americans were at war with the Japanese. Now, is this European history? Well, strictly speaking, no. Uh, the Japanese do invade some French and British territories, however, and it is pertinent to the end of World War II, which is, at least in part, a European conflict, so it's relevant enough for me to include, in my opinion. Plus, as a citizen of the world, you should have a basic knowledge of uh, what's going on in this. So, as we saw in an earlier part of Chapter 29, the Japanese had invaded China, there was a lot of brutality going on uh, at this point. And the United States, in order to kind of try to cap them down, keep them from doing this any further, but also to avoid going to war, puts a trade embargo on them, which essentially says, we are not going to give you oil. Okay? Well, oil you need, especially if you are a warlike nation trying to go to war and whatnot. Uh, so the Japanese are angry about this they begin to perceive the Americans as being a threat, an impending threat, a dagger pointed at their throats, collectively. So the Japanese decide they are going to attack us at Pearl Harbor. Uh, Pearl Harbor at the time, of course, it was in Hawaii, but it was not a state, it was a naval base. It was pretty quiet for the most part, and the Japanese were hoping to catch us off guard uh, they would do kind of random things like calling people in the area, asking them, you know, which ships were in, stuff like that, making inadvertent spies of innocent Americans there. And uh, their goal was to wipe out the Pacific Fleet. Now, they knew America was a big deal. They knew that they were not going to destroy us forever. But they thought, you know what, we can slow them down knock out their ability to make war against us now while we go and finish our Asia for the Asians empire building. That's the plan, at least. Uh, it doesn't work. It's a huge success as far as attacks go, and as far as sneak attacks go, it's a huge success. But it does not destroy the entire fleet. Um, this is one of the famous images. There actually is color footage of the Pearl Harbor um, attack. If you can, try to seek out the World War II in Color series. Their episode on Japan, War with Japan, is especially good. And I think somebody, not me, really not me, um, but I think I did see it on the YouTube. So I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not, but you might want to look at it. It's pretty good. Again, I didn't do it. I'm not telling you. If it was illegal, don't watch it. Um, to nowadays at Oahu, uh, they still have a memorial uh, for one of the aircraft carriers that was sunk. Uh, this is the USS Arizona. Uh, you can even, if you are a veteran and you are, uh, you die, not if you're dying, you have to die first, uh, you could be cremated and they have some sort of way to get your ashes down there so you can actually lie amongst uh, some of the servicemen that are still kind of, for all its purposes, buried under the water. So the United States decides, okay, neutrality ain't working. We need to get in the game, like Zac Efron would say in High School Musical. So we get the formation of the Big Three, not to be mistaken with the Big Four. The Big Four, of course, being uh, Italy, the United States, Britain, and France after World War I. Uh, making the Treaty of Versailles. This is the big three. And here you've got Winston Churchill, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and you might be like, he doesn't look good. He doesn't look good. He's going to die uh, before the end of World War II to be replaced by Harry S. Truman. More on that in Chapter 30, um, and actually at the end of this lecture. And then, of course, Uncle Joe, Joseph Stalin. And you might be like, but wait a second, Stalin's a bad guy. Yes. And also Churchill had at one point said, hey, I would make a treaty with Satan himself if it meant marching against Hitler. So, 
I mean, if you're willing to make a treaty with Satan, you're probably willing to make a treaty with Stalin. It doesn't last after the war. Immediately after Hitler is defeated, the tensions ramp up again, and that's really what the Cold War is all about. Um, I just threw some stuff in here. Basically, Northern Africa was a major source of oil. The Germans and Italians, well, first the Italians try, but they fail. Um, so then the Germans intervene under the leadership of a guy named Erwin Rommel. And he is sometimes nicknamed the Desert Fox. Uh, that is his big nom de plume. No, except it's not. He's not writing anything. I don't know why I said nom de plume. And he has many victories in Northern Africa. Eventually, he is defeated by the British uh, under the leadership of Bernard Montgomery, nicknamed Monty. And they drive the Germans out of North Africa after a German defeat at the city of El Alamein. That's the Battle of El Alamein. Uh, the Germans retreat. And then the Americans come in from the west side of uh, Northern Africa. The British continue from the east side. And they form something of a pincher movement. And then heading up into Italy. And... They're successful. Now, there's more to this story. Um, what were the Americans doing in Italy? Well, the Americans, they felt like we need to knock out the Italians. The Soviets were upset about this. The Soviets were like, yo, guys, attack Hitler. Put some pressure on Hitler. And we're all like, yo, we're going to, because that's the way people talked back then. We said like, yo, and whatnot. So we were like, yo, we're going to put pressure on Italy. And they're like, but Italy is... Italy, yo, they're not that powerful. And we're like, yo, bro, we're attacking Italy. So we attack Italy, and we even displace Mussolini. Actually, his own people turn on him. Uh, then he is restored to power, um, and then we defeat him again. Um, that's kind of a shortened version of this. Uh, the United States finally does open up a second front, so to speak, if you don't count Italy. And really, because of the Italian Alps, they really couldn't go up into um, in, into Germany from there. So they attack Nazi-occupied France. You might remember that France had been divided into two. The northern part was Nazi-occupied. They actually recalled, the Nazis actually recalled Erwin Rommel uh, to set up defenses in the northern part uh, so that they can defend against any attacks because they figured somebody's going to eventually want to want to liberate France. Uh, the area that they were defending is called Normandy, um, and that's actually where there were eventually attacks. That's where D-Day happens, and um, there was southern France, the Vichy Republic. Um, the United States decides they're going to attack Nazi-occupied France along with the British and British Empire troops. The British Empire troops never get credit. I have had so many kids over the years be all like, so what was Canada doing during World War II or Australia? Were they just like sitting back, like, you know, drinking maple syrup and playing with their boomerangs and koalas? And I'm like, well, first of all, those are two different places. So they don't have boomerangs and koalas in Canada. But they were actually representing British forces. They were over. They were fighting. They were dying during World War II as well. Um, yes, the place we attack, which is Omaha Beach, uh, we also attack Utah Beach, but Omaha Beach is the famous one uh, to most people of the current generation because that is where the Saving Private Ryan battlefield uh, scene is filmed. And if you haven't watched that, again, it's rated R, so wait till you're 17, but it is worth watching. Most historians consider it to be fairly decent as far as historical accuracy goes. Plus, it's awesome. Uh, it really makes you realize how brave those guys were. You know, they're walking into machine guns that are posted up high and firing down on them. This is Normandy today. Uh, but, I mean, back in the day, that's all beach there. This was all beach. And the guys were having to move up. And the thing's firing down on them. Like, big old guns, big old cannons. Uh, they're human for scale, if you want to know how big these guns are. I mean... If you have a family member that fought in World War II, give them a hug and say thank you. They really did a great job. And they were brave as all get out. And quite frankly, Hitler was the manifestation of evil on the earth. So kicking Hitler's butt was kind of an important thing to do. So even if you don't care at all about history or whatever, thank a veteran. 
uh, when you see him. That's not downplaying any of the stuff that happened in the Pacific. Those guys deserve your thanks too. Represent. Anyway, um, in case you're wondering, this is the Normandy Cemetery today for the Allied forces. Uh, there, but I had a kid ask me once, "What about uh, uh what about the Germans that died?" I'm like, well, that's a good point. Uh, what happened? What would happen to the Germans that died? Uh, this is their cemetery today. Um, actually, this was taken in 1987, so it's it's later than 1987 now. But uh, this is what it looked like at least in 1987. Not as well maintained. And I got these pictures from a teacher that traveled over to France, and they asked why. And basically, the groundskeeper said, because they lost. Fair enough. So the Americans liberate France and start pushing eastward. It's more complicated than this, but this is what we're going. When you take AP US, you can study the Battle of the Bulge and uh, Works Drift and all that sort of I think Works Drift is actually in Africa. I don't think that's actually in France. But I'm going to leave this in just in case somebody, just in case I'm right. Somebody's like, oh, good, he mentioned Rocks Drift. But I'm actually, the more I think about it, I'm fairly sure that's a battle with the British and the Zulus. And I'm not going to look it up, because YOLO. So, American and Soviet troops meet up in Berlin. Again, massive simplification. But the Americans were coming from the West, and the uh, Soviets were coming from the East. And it really needs to be said that the Americans fought heavily during World War II against the Germans. But the Soviets had more losses than the Americans. The Soviets took the full brunt of Hitler's savagery, and they won. Uh, in Russia, this is called the Great Patriotic War instead of World War II. This was us fighting for our survival against the Nazis. And um, anyway, this is what we got here. The Third Reich is defeated. Uh, Germany surrenders. Um, it's because... Oh, here's Captain America punching Hitler in the face. That didn't actually happen. But that is the cover to Captain America Comics number one. And um, I like Captain America. Uh, Hitler committed suicide on April 30th. Uh, his birthday had been April 20th. Um, and so he was an old man at this point. Uh, he had uh, suffered a suicide, not a suicide attempt, a, a assassination attempt. Uh, back in 1944, in July, uh, this was the plot that was discussed in uh, Valkyrie, that Tom Cruise film. And Hitler decides, all right, I'm going to retreat to this bunker. Germany has failed me, and I'm just going to watch it burn. So he's down there, and as it gets closer and closer to the inevitable where Soviet troops are going into Berlin, he's like, well, they're not going to catch me alive. Can't have that. Because, and he was actually worried about this, he was concerned, see Hitler was concerned, that Stalin was going to catch him and put him in a cage and display him uh, to his people and let people poke sticks at him. That was actually a concern. So, you could assume by this point, Hitler was not only physically damaged, he had nerve damage on the left side of his body from the uh, Stauffenberg plot in 1944 where they tried to kill him, but also he was mentally damaged as well, um, partially because his doctor was a crank who just gave him all kinds of terrible stuff, um, including injections of bull semen uh, to make him better. Um, now, I don't think that actually helps you. It just makes you probably worse. Um, some people think he might have suffered from Parkinson's by the end of his life. Uh, minor dementia or major dementia. That's my wife texting me. Uh, I apologize. Let me. My bad. Anyway, so uh, Hitler is down there in his bunker. He's got Joseph Goebbels, and Joseph Goebbels uh, is the propaganda minister, of course. Um, he's visited right after his birthday by Hermann Goering, uh, but Goering makes the mistake of uh, indicating that he would like to settle peace with the British separately from the Russians, independently of Hitler. So Hitler has him uh, detained and um, wants him killed. He, he's not, not at this point at least. Um, Goebbels is, stays down there. He's a true believer, uh, but Heinrich Himmler also falls out of favor uh, with Hitler. He feels like he's got no friends at all. He doesn't. He's freaking Hitler. He has no friends. Everyone hates Hitler. 
Um, he's got his girl right there. He's got Ava Brown. Uh, Ava was his really his second major relationship since he had become a powerful political figure. His first was, of course, his niece, Gailey Rilball. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing her last name. Anyway, on April 29th, he marries Eva Braun. He had not married her previously to, the, to this date because he didn't want to uh, make the women of Germany upset. He was concerned that women would commit suicide in massive numbers if he was off the marriage market. This is actually a thing he believed. So he needs to marry uh, Ava at the last minute. So he's like, all right, I'll marry you. He marries her like 3 o'clock in the morning. And um, the next day, they get up, the newlyweds get up, and they decide they're going to kill themselves. Now, the decision had already been made that Hitler was going to kill himself. In fact, he had been stockpiling gasoline uh, because he wanted his body to be burned. This is the area where Hitler's body was burned. Uh, the bunker is underneath. They came up. Um, well, once they were dead, they didn't kill themselves out in the open. Um, but they came up, they were burned afterwards. Uh, they were carried up by some of the Nazis that were in there with him. Um, Hitler, the way he dies is a little controversial. I mean, basically, we know he kills himself. We know he shoots himself. Eva Braun also shoots herself. Um, Hitler may have also taken poison, uh, cyanide specifically. His prob the problem with this, some people have said, well, cyanide is fast acting, but it wouldn't be so fast acting that he uh, took it and then immediately died. So I think it's likely, that given how paranoid he was, that he did take a cyanide pill and then shoot himself in the temple. Uh, Ava Braun just shot herself in the temple. They both died. This is the couch that they were sitting on when they died and that was found by the Soviets. And then after their bodies were uh, recovered by the other Nazis, who again knew this was going to happen. This was not a shocker. Uh, they carried him up and uh, burned him outside. And the funny thing about that is that at the Battle of the Bulge, the German troops, the German tanks, literally run out of gasoline. Hitler had been hoarding resources for his pet projects, for himself, uh, for the continuation of the Holocaust. I mean, he was not making strategic moves at all. But again, if you've really been paying attention to me, Homie has not been making strategic moves for a long time. He's been driven by his crazy racism the whole time. So, just another bad decision made by a bad person. Um, I wrote my thesis on how uh, Hitler's last 10 days have been perceived in media. Uh, there's a pretty good movie uh, that came out, what was it called, Downfall, that some people have heard of. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, there's one that came out in 1974 or three, 1973, uh, that stars Obi Wan Kenobi as Hitler. Alec, Alex Guinness is his name. Alec, sorry, he's British. Alec, Alec Pip Pip, Governor Alec Guinness. Don't get my name wrong, Gov. And um, he plays Hitler in that one. Although I think that Bruno Ganz, uh, the guy in Downfall, makes a more realistic-looking Hitler. But that's just my opinion. So, Hitler's defeated. Oh, trivia. Trivia time. After Hitler, is he the last ruler of the Third Reich? No, he's not. It goes to Admiral uh, Chester, I believe his name is. Maybe not. Admiral Donitz is his last name. And he is the one that negotiates a peace with the Allies on May 8th, 1945. Um, he knows he's losing. He had no interest in continuing the war. Hitler fully intended for him to continue the war, but he was like, mm -mm. so he didn't. Um, now we go over to Japan. Now you were looking at this picture, and you're like, whoa, Mr. Oliver, a little racist, yo. Uh, yeah, um, it is. Uh, during World War II, the um, Japanese were portrayed in American propaganda extremely negatively. Uh, it's almost cartoonish how car how these cartoons and these political cartoons make them look. I mean, they make them look like they're not even human. And part of the reason for that is that when you're at war with someone, you're trying to convince your troops that it's okay to go kill them. And a lot of American troops were already fairly convinced because of the whole Pearl Harbor thing, the vengeance on that. But by... Per portraying them in this cartoonish, scarcely human kind of way, it was kind of a, 
Yeah, it's okay. It's to do this. We're not concerned about their feelings. And besides, you know, we're going to be going and killing them. So keep that in mind. I'm certainly not justifying it. You should never make racist art. Um, but uh, are you, do you recognize the art style of who made this one right here? It's Dr. Seuss. Yeah, Dr. Seuss. You know, Dr. Seuss, Cat in the Hat and all that. Mm -hmm. So the Japanese lose several major Pacific battles. Again, when you go into APUS, you can talk about uh, Midway and the Coral Sea. Actually, Coral, Battle of the Coral Sea comes first, I know, May 1942. And then Midway and then Lake Gulf. You could talk about all of those. In Euro, let's just say they were defeated in several battles. And then the Americans decide, well, we need to get closer to them by island hopping. By going from island to island to island to island to get closer to them. And that was uh, part of the idea of General Douglas MacArthur, who said, hit them where they ain't and let them die on the vine. And the idea there was, don't go to the most heavily defended islands, go to where they're least defended, let those other ones just end up, those other islands, just let them die. Let them sit on the island. Let them rot. Um, because eventually we're going to get close enough to Japan in order to stage an invasion, in order to do bombing, and then actually send in troops. But there's a concern that actually invading Japan would lead to a lot of people being killed, American people. So a very controversial decision is made by our new President Truman. Uh, Roosevelt had died. Under Roosevelt, they had begun working on something called the Manhattan Project. And this is essentially the atomic bomb. And they didn't want the Soviet Union to know about this. Again, things were already getting frostier and frostier with the Soviet Union. And by that I mean awkward as far as getting along. Uh, the Soviets had troops in all of Eastern Europe. And Stalin was basically saying like, yeah, we might not leave. We might occupy those people. We might not allow free elections for them. And everybody's like, whoa, 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 what? And Truman's like, mm, you told Roosevelt that uh, you wouldn't do that. And he's like, I changed my mind. Pray I do not change it again. I don't know why he quotes Darth Vader, but he just did. So, Truman decides to use the atomic bomb to end the war and save American lives. Very controversial decision. Here's his rationale. The Japanese have this Bushido code. And the idea is they do not surrender. The Japanese in the island fighting that we had on Okinawa and Iwo Jima and numerous other islands had been fighting to the death. There were mass suicides of both civilians and soldiers rather than being taken prisoner. Uh, crashed planes, we would sometimes go to pick up people who had fallen out of the plane, would ejected. They would detonate themselves in order to keep us from getting them alive. Uh, the kamikaze tactics of the later war, uh, you, we, which you might have heard of, were the Japanese literally suicide bombing their planes into American boats with the intention of not only intimidating, but also destroying a lot of American lives and property with as few Japanese people as possible. The other reason they did that, by the way, is because most of their really good pilots had been killed by that point in the war, uh, after Midway, uh, Lake Gulf, and the Coral Sea. So, not in that order, of course. Uh, so, he decides he's going to use the atomic bomb. This plane here is the Enola Gay, uh, named after the pilot's girlfriend. And um, I don't know if her name, I think Gay just meant like happy back then. It, it still does technically, but most people don't use it that way. Um, so he was just like saying like, she's so happy. And they dropped uh, this one, little boy, uh, on them. They nicknamed the atomic bombs. The big one is called Fat Man, and the other one is called Little Boy. Like this one to me looks like Charlie Brown. I've always thought that. Because he's wearing like the yellow shirt with the little black, you know, kind of stripey thing, but it's like, you know, crooked. And then the blue one, they should call like little blue or something like that. But no, they went fat man, little boy. I wasn't alive. Uh, you know that because I look so young. But I wasn't alive in order to advise them on naming. So first they drop little boy on a Japanese city called Hiroshima, and the arguments against doing this are, I mean, obvious. Like. 
it's going to destroy this place. And you look at it, and the city is devastated. 60% of the people in the city, I'm sorry, 60% of the city property, the, the stuff, is destroyed. 100,000 of its people are killed. Now, that's immediately. Over time, the radiation is responsible for killing many, many more people. It's almost hard to count how many people are affected by this because cancer is a thing, miscarriages are a thing, people born with birth defects that are fatal are a thing. That, that happens, but it seems to have happened more because of the radiation. So it's hard to pin down an exact number of how long the people were affected by this and uh, how much long-term damage it did to that society. Um, certainly massive uh, effects. I um, mean, you look at, that used to be a city. Those squares were city blocks. And their only things remaining are like little hunks of buildings. Um, pictures like that really make it real to me. Um, I don't know about you. And then the Japanese are victimized again. Three days later, we drop another bomb. And this one, of course, is called Fat Man. It's on the city of Nagasaki. Now, you might say, why did we drop these bombs, both of them? Like, one, okay, we're trying to prevent Americans from losing their lives. And Truman thought we might lose up to one million of our soldiers invading Japan. So it's like, well, we'd rather have a million of them or, or a million of us. And it ended up being much less than a million of them. So, of course... Truman sided with bomb the Japanese. But the second one is a bit more controversial. Some historians and foreign policy people say that the reason that the United States dropped the second bomb was because they wanted the Japanese to surrender immediately. The Soviet Union, like I said, relationship was getting frosty, and America was concerned that if the Soviets got involved, anywhere significantly that we might be like, ooh, now we actually have to make a peace treaty that involves the Soviets. But if we knock the Japanese out of the war quickly, we won't have to do that. So we drop another bomb. This time they will surrender. Um, there were different types of bombs if you're actually interested in it. Um, the bomb on Nagasaki was actually, it was a different type and literally melted flesh off of people's bodies. I mean, this is horrible, terrible stuff. Um, I'm not saying it was a right or wrong decision. I think we can all agree it was a terrible thing that happened. Uh, that's the mushroom cloud created by the atomic bomb. That is Nagasaki after uh, the atomic bomb was detonated on August 9th, 1945. And uh, these are some pictures of people who were victims. Um, some people, this obviously radiation stuff, radiation burns, uh, people uh, lost hair, uh, some people literally had their intestines outside of their bodies, they were turned inside out. I mean, this is awful, terrible stuff. Um, there are many good documentaries about this. I would recommend researching it further, but it's gruesome, I'm just warning you in advance. Uh, today, in Hiroshima, uh, there is um, a monument to where the bomb hit, and it really encourages peace and unity and hoping that it will never happen again. Uh, there have only been two atomic bombs used in warfare in history, two times, both us, both on the Japanese. Since then, there have not been any, it's almost been 100 years now, any uh, atomic bombs dropped. Uh, there have been tests, of course, by the Soviets, by us, by others, but there have not been any warfare uses. Japan ends up surrendering on August 14th, 1945. This is VJ Day. Um, May 8th was Victory in Europe Day, VE Day. Uh, VJ would be Victory in Japan Day. It's pretty logical. Uh, that fellow there is General Douglas MacArthur. Uh, he's signing on uh, one of the American aircraft carriers. Uh, this is an iconic photo that was taken of an American serviceman, a, a sailor, kissing, looks like a nurse, I guess, in the streets. They didn't know each other. They'd never met. They were both so overcome 
with joy that it was over, that they were just like, you know what, let's YOLO. This was, this is YOLOing kids, okay? And that's all they did. They just kissed and they were like, you know what, I respect you. It was, a, it, you're okay with the kiss? Okay, yes, so was I, excellent. Good day, ma'am. And then they went their own ways. That's the, that's the only time you should kiss in public, when you're celebrating the end of a war. So, overall statistics for World War II, as you can see, much worse than World War I, which they thought was the war to end all wars. Um, 300,000 Americans are killed, um, most in the Pacific. Uh, 700,000 more are wounded. And um, no war has ever uh, cost more for the Americans uh, since then, except the Civil War, the American Civil War, because both sides were American. Of course, the Americans lost the most in that war. But in modern warfare, this is the worst. Uh, the Germans are put on war crimes trials, um, and that starts in Nuremberg. Uh, of your top Nazis, most of them are dead. Uh, Hitler killed himself. Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, um, disguised himself as a peasant woman to try to slip away in the chaos at the end of the war, was caught by American soldiers, and then took cyanide and killed himself. Uh, Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister, uh, he killed himself in the same bunker as Hitler did. Uh, he poisoned himself using cyanide, and uh, as did his wife, and they even killed all of their children. They had many children that they also um, put cyanide capsules into chocolates, which they gave the children before bed. So they can't, we can't blame them now, because they're dead already. We can't put them on trial. So we've only got Hermann Goering, who, due to the fact that he lost favor with Hitler at the end of the war, was still around. Uh, we've got him, we've got Rudolf Hess, who was a fan of Hitler's, uh, who had go, uh, gone off to England to attempt to negotiate a peace and or defect from the Nazis, depending on who you believe there. Uh, Hess changed his story, probably, to say, like, oh, yeah, I totes wanted to join you guys and uh, renounce Hitler. Mm -hmm. Probably in real life, he was there to make friends with the British. Um, anyway, he's on there. Uh, Albert Speer, Hitler's architect, and later uh, one of the guys that was in charge of the war economy, uh, all these guys are put on trial, and they're forced to hear all the terrible things that happened. Some of them claim ignorance. Some of them say, hey, we didn't know about this. We didn't know that the Holocaust was happening. Uh, we didn't know about the organization of the death camps. Um, some do try to accept some kind of responsibility, but it's vague. Uh, the defense you hear from the guys that ran the camps that are implicated were, we were only following orders, uh, which has become synonymous now with, you, look, you can't say that. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to put all my, my morality aside, even if someone asks me to do something terrible. But in the military, you are asked to do bad things. So as a soldier, you got to have a line, a moral line, and understand, like, we don't do these things. And it comes up over and over again in history. Vietnam troops are sometimes ordered to do bad things. We're certainly not the only ones. Um, I think the Germans and the Japanese in World War II got us way beat, but I will not editorialize. Um, so the war crimes trial uh, sees uh, many Germans hanged. Uh, Goering is not one of them. Uh, he hangs himself in his cell. He sweet talks one of his guards uh, He's very charismatic. He's, he manages to make friends with him, and um, he talks the guard into getting him uh, some rope so he can murder himself. Actually, it's not a rope. It's like a shirt or something he could use. Uh, the Japanese are also put on a war crimes trial for their stuff in that happened in Nanking, of course. Uh, they also used chemical warfare, uh, infecting fleas with diseases and dropping them on Chinese cities. Um, again, horrible, terrible stuff. Um, experiments on humans like the uh, German doctors had been doing in units uh, that was in the Japanese was unit 731 uh, so there were war crimes trials for both Japan you still have the Emperor in charge even after the war crimes trial you have some of the leaders that a lot of people felt were directly responsible getting off with pretty much scot-free 
uh, because other people accept responsibility and say, oh, my leader never knew about this. And that's a little dodgy, but that's what happened. And uh, some Nazis got away. Uh, some went to South America or traveled uh, across Europe with fake identities. Uh, some Israelis actually let in, later on end up hunting them down and murdering them. You could totally see why they would feel the need to you know, track these guys down. Uh, Joseph Mengele, one of the guys I was talking about back in the Holocaust section, uh, he uh, wasn't caught. They had to hunt him down. There's a fictionalized version of this in that X-Men First Class movie with Magneto going around doing that. And um, they still find some Nazis today. Occasionally, you'll read in the paper about some like nine-year-old nine dude that they find, and he's been living under an assumed identity in America or in some other country. And they're like, "Nope, we're going to put you on trial because you, what you did was wrong, and there is no statute of limitations on murder or in human acts." Personally, I think good, but some people might be like, "Oh, they're old," or whatever. You're left to your opinions. I hope this was helpful to you. If you ever have any questions. So if you have any questions, you can uh, email me at bullardoliver at gmail.com. If you want to tweet at me on the Twitter, uh, you can go at Oliver Euro. I'm not very active on that, but I'm trying to be more because that's what the kids are into. Uh, or you can hashtag something Bullard Euro uh, to get my attention. Best is to actually at me at Oliver Euro and then uh, hashtag it Bullard Euro. And I'll try to get back to you. Uh, leave any questions, comments in the co in the comment section in the YouTube, uh, or um, just email me. If I got anything wrong, I'll correct it as quickly as possible. Um, if you could do say anything better or clarify something better, let me know. Feedback is great. So have a nice day, and I will see you with a different unit. Adios.